Hello AlgoFam, today we're going to talk about Algorand smart contracts, how they work and each part of them. The smart contracts are the heart of the blockchain applications. In Algorand, these smart contracts contain the on-chain logic for a distributed application or a job. You can use them and combine with any other layer 1 feature of the Algorand network. Smart contracts can also generate asset and payment transactions, hold any kind of assets, and store persistent data values on-chain. Let's see how they compose. Every smart contract in Algorand has a unique app ID to be identified, an account or address to manage assets. You can also see the address from the account that created each smart contract, the hash from the approval program, which is the main program of the smart contract, the hash from the clear program that serves for the clear out operation, we'll talk about this in a while, and the global and the local data schema. That represents the variables you can store in the smart contract for each different storage type. How can you build one? In Algorand, the base language is still transaction execution approval language. As you can see in the screenshot, it has some similarity to assembler language, and this is the language that the Algorand virtual machine interprets. If you don't want to deal with assembly like programming, you have Python as an option. It's based on Python with a more familiar way to coding and a more natural syntax. However, the most recommended way to build a smart contract in Algorand is Beaker. Beaker is an Algorand framework built on top of PyTil that saves you a lot of time and effort when you're building a smart contract. You can find a complete series of videos to learn about Beaker here in our channel. Now, see this overview. Here we can see the different components of our smart contracts and the interactions. Let's talk about each of these. First, the storage. In Algorand smart contracts, you can save persistent data on-chain in three different ways. In the global state, you can store data that is associated with the application itself. If you need some data for each user, you can use the local state, having different values on each of them. Remember, for this case, the user will need to obtain the smart contract. And then you have boxes. They have and an unstructured data model, so they're more flexible with the data scheme. Also, you can allocate as many boxes as you need per application, up to 32 kilobytes per box. Now, imagine you have a client, maybe a front-end application, an API backend, or any other service, and you need to communicate with a smart contract. Here's where you make a transaction, an application call transaction to be specific. But we have different types of it. First, you have the no app, which is a generic call to our approval program or the logic for offered application. Here you could call any function inside of it, including or not arguments. Then there's the opt-in, which enables the local storage. The delete application, as it says, this transaction deletes the application itself. The update application to update till programs the closeout transaction to allow user to close their participation on the smart contract. But depending on the application and its defined restriction, this transaction could fail if conditions are not reached. By the way, you can disable any of these transactions simply by making them fail immediately in your logic. For example, if you don't want a smart contract to be deliverable, then you have to add a piece of code in your smart contract to make this transaction fail. Finally, we have the clear state transaction, which is similar to the closeout. The difference is that this transaction will avoid any condition or logic in the application and will never fail. It's like a forced delete of the local state. Remember, opt-in, closeout, and clear transaction are only needed when you want to store data per user. It means in the local state. Notice this is also something you can make with boxes, with an even more simple approach, just relating any box with a specific account. In our documentation, you will find how to do this. So, now we know what are application calls and their types. But according to the logic, in each application, you will need to specify and send different data per transaction. And this data is sent using transaction arrays. Their purpose is to restrict the amount of the ledger data the smart contract can access. In this way, the algorithm network can maintain its high TPS. 
You can send accounts so your logic can interact with them, application IDs in case your app needs to interact with other smart contracts, asset IDs if you need to operate with any of those, arguments for the function in your logic, and boxes so your application can access them and read or write data according to your need. You have a right to the end of this video. Now you know all the basics about smart contracts in Algorand. It's time to continue learning paths. If you want to go deeper in the topics of this video, in our documentation you will find further information. You can learn how to code a smart contract with us in our channel. We have different video series for learning about Beaker, PyTIL and TIL. Also, remember to visit our GitHub to find many useful repositories with examples and use cases. And finally, join the Algorand Discord channel to engage with community and learn all together.